Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of screencasts on LaTeX, the scientific document typesetting system. This series will eventually form a self-contained video short course on using LaTeX. Our primary audience is students learning LaTeX for use in their coursework, but we hope these are accessible and useful for everyone. So in this screencast, we're going to learn about LaTeX and how it works, think about its advantages versus a word processor, and then give some places on the web where you can find and download LaTeX to your computer or use it in a browser. So what is LaTeX? LaTeX is a software system that produces professionally typeset documents. It was created by computer scientist Donald Knuth for typesetting technical documents with lots of mathematical notation in them. Typesetting mathematics is still its main strength, but the system is now capable of typesetting all kinds of documents, including research posters, complex graphical objects, and even sheet music. LaTeX is very different from a word processor, which is a single program on your computer where you type in text using formatting styles provided by the program itself. LaTeX instead is more like a programming language. You type in your content into a text editor and then insert commands into the text that will control the appearance of the output. These documents that contain the source code all end in the file extension .tex. Once the text document is created, you then compile the source code using the LaTeX system that is separate from the text editor used to edit your content. Once the code is compiled successfully, LaTeX produces a PDF that contains the finished product. Other file types, such as encapsulated PostScript, are also possible for LaTeX to produce. This three-step system is more complicated than using a single word processor, but in some ways it's actually simpler, because the source codes are small, since they just contain text and contain no separate formatting. The source codes can be shared and used across multiple platforms with no compatibility issues, and because you can create templates for documents which you can reuse over and over again with minimal changes. And one of the big advantages of LaTeX is that it is absolutely free, and variations of it are available for Word, Mac, Linux, and many other operating systems. In the next screencast, we'll get started with making your first LaTeX document, but between now and then, you'll need to gain access to LaTeX. And there are several ways to do this. If you're a Windows user, the standard LaTeX system is called MicTech and can be downloaded and installed from MicTech.org. If you use a Mac, the standard system is called MacTech and can be downloaded and installed from TUG.org, that stands for Tech Users Group, slash MacTech. The MacTech Extras are utilities that you might find useful, such as an equation editor, but they are not necessary for installation. If you are a Linux user, your Linux distribution probably already has LaTeX installed along with the operating system. Check your package man management system and see. If it's not installed already, you can install it from there. There are also some web-based versions of LaTeX that require no installation at all. The most popular one is ScribTech, which allows you to enter, typeset, and store a limited number of documents online. The upside of ScribTech is that there is no installation necessary and files are stored in the cloud. The downside is that you have to be online to use it, you don't get the flexibility of a local system, and unless you pay a subscription there are only so many documents you can have at one time. Chances are your professor, a friend, or a Google search can be of help in installing your system if you should run into any roadblocks. So in the next screencast we'll get started using your LaTeX system to start making a simple text and math document. See you there! Hello, and welcome to the second screencast on LaTeX. In this video, we're going to set up your very first LaTeX document, just a simple document that just works with some basic text. In the process of doing this, we're going to learn about how to find a good text editor for your latex needs, how a basic LaTeX document is structured, entering text and how LaTeX handles basic text formatting, such as white spaces, how LaTeX goes about compiling and then practicing compiling LaTeX source to a PDF document, and then finally running through some basic debugging tasks, tasks in the case of errors. Now before we go on, you first need to have access to a LaTeX system. The first video in this series gave some places to go to access LaTeX. Once you have access to LaTeX, either on the web or on your own machine, you can continue. Before we make a document, we need something with which to make it. As discussed in the first video, LaTeX documents are written as plain text and are then compiled into PDFs. You need a text editor for typing out LaTeX source code. A text editor is a program that allows you to type in input from the white keyboard without any special formatting. Fortunately, most LaTeX installations come with text editors, especially designed to work with LaTeX. 
MicTech, the LigTech distribution for Windows, comes with a program called TechWorks. TechWorks is also available for Mac and for Linux. MacTech for Macs comes with a program called TechShop that is simple and full featured. Other good text editors for the Mac include TextMate and Text Wrangler. ScribTech, the web-based LaTeX system, has its own editor built in. All of these programs have a feature called syntax highlighting, which means that special LaTeX commands you use are highlighted in different colors so you can tell them apart from regular text. Before moving on, find or install a text editor for your LaTeX installation and open it up. For all the screencasts you see in this series, I'll be using the editor TextMate on a Mac. Other text editors will look slightly different, but the basic operations will be more or less the same. Here we are in a blank text editor. Let's jump right in and start making a new LaTeX document. The first thing we have to do is tell LaTeX what kind of document we are starting. So in the first line, type slash document class curly brace article close curly brace. This is the first example of a LaTeX command. The slash Hello and welcome to the third of a series of screencasts on LaTeX, the scientific document typesetting system. In this video, we're going to expand on the simple Hello World document you made and typeset in the second video to add some mathematics. We're going to learn about how to typeset mathematics inline or alongside text, how to typeset math displayed or set off from text, how to typeset exponents and subscripts, how to use curly braces for larger arguments in exponents and subscripts, and then do a simple case study where we typeset the statement of the Pythagorean theorem. So here's the Hello World document we made in the last video. Let's add on a separate line a very simple equation, 3x plus 2 equals 7. We'll actually set this up with some text. I'd like to put the equation alongside my text here, which we call inline math. To change from text entry to inline mathematics entry, we type a dollar sign. Then the equation we want. Then close the dollar sign. The dollar signs mark the beginning and end of inline math entries. Now typeset it, and we see that the math comes up and it is visibly different than the text around it. Hello and welcome to the fourth video in a series on LaTeX, the math typesetting language. In the third video, we learned about how to include basic mathematical notation in your LaTeX document. In this video, we're going to take this a little farther by discussing more advanced math notation, such as roots and radical signs, fractions, Greek letters, the infinity symbol, trig and logarithmic functions, and then resources for finding LaTeX commands for more symbols on the web and elsewhere. Let's start here with a blank LaTeX document. It's not really blank, of course, because I put in the preamble to the document and the begin and end document environment commands. Let's begin by looking at roots. To typeset, say, the square root of 2, we'll need to be in math mode first of all, so let's type in a single dollar sign to start inline math mode. If we wanted this to be in displayed math mode, remember we'd use a double dollar sign. Now type in the command slash sqrt, then open a curly brace, then the number 2, then close the curly brace. Compiling the document will result in a square root of 2. LaTeX automatically resizes the radical sign, so if I have a large argument under the root, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and compile it, the radical sign will automatically fit. Generally speaking, in LaTeX, any required arguments for commands are enclosed in curly braces, like the 2 and square root of 2. Any optional arguments are enclosed in square braces. For example, if I wanted a cube root, the LaTeX command for this is I need to add one optional argument to the sqrt command between the, square, the sqrt and the curly braces. And so I'll put in a pair of square brackets, and inside the square brackets I'm going to put a 3. And when I compile this, it causes the root to become a cube root. Similarly, if I wanted, say, the 10th root, I'd put a 10 in the square brackets. For example, the 25th root of 11 will be typed like this. Another kind of common notation is fractions. Of course, you can, set a type, you can typeset a fraction horizontally just by entering math mode and using the slash character like this. But a lot of times we want to typeset fractions vertically, and in that case we use a special command. To typeset 2 over 3 vertically, you enter math mode by typing a dollar sign, then type slash frac, which is a command to build fractions, 
then we're going to create two sets of curly braces with no spaces in between. That means that the frac command has two required arguments, and that's going to be the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to enter in two into the numerator, and then three in the, into the denominator, and then compile it. And just as with the square root command, if I enter in a large numerator or denominator, the fraction bar will expand to fit. For example, let's type in frac, two sets of curly braces, then x plus y plus z on the top, and then a plus b on the bottom, and compile it. Now with this fraction, the fraction bar is the right size, but the whole fraction itself is kind of small and hard to read. If this were in displayed math mode, then the fraction and the variables that are on the top and the bottom of it would look pretty much the same as the text that surrounds it. But suppose we don't want to go into displayed math mode, we really want this one to be in line. Well, there's a command we can add to fraction and any other thing that involves a delimiter like parentheses, as we'll see later, that will make things displayed size without putting them in displayed mode, and that is simply slash display style and then a curly brace and then close the curly brace elsewhere to close it off. What this is going to do is take the argument that's inside the brackets, the fraction command in this case, and just simply make it the same size as it would be if it were in displayed mode so now it's a whole lot easier to read. Now let's look at a few special symbols Lake Tech can handle. Greek letters are especially easy for LaTeX. Generally speaking these are entered in as commands whose names are the same as the letter you want. For example, if you want to enter a lowercase Greek alpha, you would typeset this by going into math mode first of all, and then typing slash alpha with a lowercase a. To get an uppercase Greek letter, you just capitalize the first letter of the LaTeX command. For example, an uppercase Greek delta would be obtained by typing slash capital D ELTA. Make sure you're out of math mode, and then compile. You can also typeset the infinity symbol. That's just slash I-N-F-T-Y. Going back to functions, you can typeset all six trigonometric functions just by invoking their names. For example, if I want to typeset cosine of 2 theta, I enter in math mode by typing two dollar signs, then typing slash C-O-S 2, and then I'm going to enter in a Greek letter lowercase theta, so that's slash lowercase t h e t a, and then compile it, and we get what we wanted. I can typeset a trig definition by putting together everything we know so far. Let's go into displayed mode and let's type out the definition of the tangent of an angle phi. So we're in displayed math mode, so I want the tangent, that's slash t a n. Then I want the Greek letter phi, which is slash lowercase phi equals, and then the tangent is just the sine divided by the cosine. So I'm going to type slash frac to start a fraction, then two sets of curly braces. I'm going to put the numerator, which is slash sin, and then slash phi in the numerator here in the first set of brackets, and then slash cos slash phi for cosine of phi in the denominator. And when I compile it, I see that I got what I wanted. Logarithmic functions work similarly. There's a command for the natural log, ln, just slash ln, and a command for a general logarithm, which is slash log. If you need to specify a base, we can just subscript the log like we learned in video 3. For example, the log base 2 of x is in math mode slash log underscore 2 space x and then close the math mode symbols and we get what we needed. So at this point you get the idea that LaTeX is very comprehensive in its treatment of mathematical symbols. Rather than showing a bunch more examples, let's just think about some places we can go to learn more. The document at this URL is a massive document of all the symbols that LaTeX can handle. It's worth keeping a copy around for reference and searching. However, you should know that some of the symbols shown in this document require special packages, which we will discuss later in, a, in another screencast, and they may not work on your system without a special installation. The website Detechify allows you to draw the symbol you want inside a box, and the website will then attempt to decipher your handwriting and then find the symbol you wanted. Note that this only works for single symbols. If you need to find the LaTeX code for something that has multiple parts, like arc cosine or something like that, then this won't do that. 
There's also an iPhone app for Detechify if you need something on the go, as well as an app that just serves as a LaTeX reference. Finally, this website called Web Equation works similarly to Detechify, except it handles entire LaTeX expressions. So that should be enough to get you working on a more advanced document with prettier mathematics in it. The next video will be a couple of case studies where we'll use what we've learned so far to typeset some more complicated documents. See you there. Hello there and welcome to video 5 in the introduction to LaTeX series. In this video we're going to look at two front to back examples where we typeset the quadratic formula and the definition of the derivative from calculus and this should put together everything that we've learned so far. So let's start with the quadratic formula and the way I'm going to do this is write out the quadratic formula first and then we'll go into LaTeX to typeset it. So we know the quadratic formula says uh, if um, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then, and uh, the quadratic formula's result is pretty important, so I'm going to use displayed mode uh, to set this off and write, uh, or eventually typeset, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So there's the quadratic formula, and just looking at the formula and thinking ahead as to what I'm going to have to do in LaTeX, I see a couple of places where there are some exponents to take care of. This is going to be an inline math mode. All this stuff is going to be in displayed math mode. There's a root with a bunch of things under it, a fraction with some pretty large, uh, with a pretty large numerator. Then finally, there's uh, the plus minus sign, which uh, we haven't learned, so I'm going to have to go look that up. So let's go over into ScribTech and start uh, typing up the LaTeX for this. So now here we are in ScribTech with an outline of a document already set up. One new thing you see here in the third line is a comment. You can always add comments into your LaTeX code, uh, just like you might do if you were writing a computer program. The percent symbol at the beginning of a line indicates that everything on that line is going to be a comment. Uh, it'll appear in the raw source code for your LaTeX file, but will not appear in the output. So if you need to leave yourself a note or somebody else a note explaining what is happening in a certain place, that's how to do it. So let's try to do what we can uh, with the tools we have uh, to set up what we hand wrote a minute ago. So first line is going to say if, that's easy enough, and then we're going to put the uh, quadratic equation in inline math mode, so one dollar sign, and then it was ax, ax squared, and so to get the exponent I type a caret symbol, that's shift six, and then a two, and just for clarity I'll put a space there, plus bx plus c equals zero, I'll close out math mode with another dollar sign, comma, then. And now here's where I switch into displayed math mode. I'm going to put two spaces here. The extra space doesn't really matter. All you need is really one space. Uh, this helps the uh, source code to be a little more readable. Then I'll begin displayed mode, displayed math mode with a double dollar sign. And then I'll need x equals. Everything to the right of the equal sign is a fraction. So I'm going to start with slash frac two sets of curly braces, one for the numerator, the other for the denominator, and let's go ahead and close off the math mode here. Now let's just fill in the blanks. Uh, in the numerator, I'm going to have negative b, and here's where we come to something we haven't learned yet. We are needing the plus and minus symbol, and we haven't seen that. So what I've got over here on an extra tab is that comprehensive LaTeX symbol guide that we mentioned in the last video. And I've gone to uh, the page here where it starts on mathematical symbols, and I can just start doing a search here until I see what I need. And I see, there it is, uh, slash PM gives me the plus minus symbol. This very frequently has to happen. I could have also gone over to Detectify and tried writing that in. But very often Often you're going to need a symbol that you haven't ever seen before. No problems. Just go to the document or detectify or web equation and look it up. So let's go back and put in slash pm. Now what happens next is a square root. So I'm going to type slash sqrt and then another set of curly braces for the argument of the square root. So now inside the square root symbol, let's put what we need. That would be b squared, again with the caret key there to get the uh, 2 as an exponent, minus 4ac. And we're all done. So now I'm going to go with the, the uh, denominator and just type 2a. That's all I need to typeset, so I'm just going to click Compile. And over in my other tab, I see that I do have what I needed. Let's zoom in so we can get a really good look at it. So that's nice looking math. 
Now let's try another famous equation for mathematics, and that's the definition of the derivative in calculus, uh, at least as it appears in some textbooks. So the way you might see this written out in the textbook is to say let uh, f, that's a variable f now, uh, be a function. Let f be a function. Then, and here I'm going to put the definition, which again, it's important, so that's what displayed math mode is for f prime of x equals limit as delta x approaches 0 of a fraction again, f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And in this one, we have a little bit of trailing text that would have to go back in line. And that is to say, that's the derivative if the limit exists. So this uh, equation is very similar in how it will be latexed up uh, to the quadratic formula with a few twists. Uh, I need to get this delta into the game here in three different places. There's an arrow that I need to find, and also I need to think about a mathematical uh, limit uh, command here. If I just type lim, I don't know if that's going to look quite right. So let's go over to uh, our editor and start latexing it up. So over here in the editor, I have put in another comment to indicate to myself in the source code that I'm starting a new section. And let's just type what we can, let f in math mode, of course, because f is a variable, be a function. Then I'm going to go into displayed math mode this time, so two dollar signs, f, the prime we're just going to use an apostrophe straight off the keyboard of x equals, and now I need the limit. If I just type lim, it's not going to look quite right. It will look like a variable l next to a variable i next to a variable m. I want the lim to look almost like it is just regular text, so if this is actually a command I'm going to use. I don't know necessarily what that command is, so I'm going to go back to my uh, comprehensive symbol list. I have no idea where it is, so I can just uh, do a quick search for LIM. And it uh, brings me a lot of things, uh, m many of which are substrings of something else I don't want, like delimiters. Uh, so let me uh, advance this to the next place where I see this showing up. Somewhere around in here. And I'm going to look for... L-I-M, L-I-M. This can be a fairly time. Oh, I think I found it. I think I found it. There it is, slash L-I-M under log-like symbols. So slash L-I-M, fairly logical. So I'm going to go and put slash L-I-M. Now to get the delta x approaches 0 underneath, I'm just going to subscript. And many commands like limits or uh, sigma notation that you use for summing, in displayed mode, subscripts are actually go directly underneath the symbol, not just like as, a, as an index subscript. And that's going to be the case for limit too. So I'm going to put just a regular subscript underscore here. Now what I'm subscripting here is not just one variable, but actually several things. I need a delta, I need an x, I need a right pointing arrow, and I need a zero. So in order to get all of that stuff to be subscripted, I need a set of curly braces. So everything that I put inside the curly braces at this point is going to go underneath the LIM. Now what is going to go in here is a capital delta, not a lowercase delta, but a capital delta x. And I need a right pointing arrow. And I could go back to my uh, comprehensive symbol list and do that. Um, or I could go over to detecify because this is just a single symbol. And so detecify ought to work pretty well. Let me just see if I can draw a right pointing arrow. And it will uh, think for a minute and eventually come back with hopefully something that's close to uh, the right thing. In fact, there's several things that could be uh, interpreted as this. Just a straight right arrow I think will be fine for what we need. So let's go back to here. And I'll put right arrow. I'll also say just the command slash TO2 will also work here. And I put zero. And now uh, the hard part is basically over. I need a fraction numerator, denominator, and uh, this, the top of the fraction is f of x plus capital delta x minus f of x, and then in the denominator it says a capital delta x, close off the displayed mode, and then the trailing text here said if the limit exists. So that ought to do it. Let's go over and compile it. And indeed, we have our limit definition right here.
And once again, just notice if I could zoom in on the, uh, the limit definition. Looking underneath the limit, notice that the limit actually appears as regular text, which is how it's supposed to, and everything that we put inside the curly braces is uh, subscripted underneath that limit as it should be. Hello there and welcome to video 6 in the series on Introduction to LaTeX. In this video, we're going to step back from mathematics and look at how to format text. Specifically, we're going to see how to make text boldface, italicized, put into small caps, underlined, in a special style called typewriter style, and we're going to learn how to handle quotation marks, both single and double quotes. Here's an empty LaTeX document template with some text already in it. Notice that everything we do in this screencast will be done in text mode, and there is nothing done in math mode. In the first sentence, let's make the words bold text actually bold. So we're going to put the cursor in front of where we want to start, and type slash T-E-X-T-B-F, that stands for text boldface, then open a curly brace, and then close a curly brace where we want the boldface to stop. In other words, we're using the command text bf and then giving the text we want to change as an argument to that command encased in curly braces as usual. And this is very similar to how the remaining text form formatting commands will work. Let's compile this to make sure it did what we wanted and we see that the text is now bold. To italicize text there are actually two commands. One is slash textit for text italics I type that and close the text I want in curly braces and compile. The other command is slash EMPH for emphasized. And again, I type that and close the text that I want to change in curly braces and compile. As you can see, there's very little difference between the two. To put text in small caps, we type slash TEXTSC and close the text in curly braces. To underline, I'm going to use the command slash underline and then enclose the text I want to change in curly braces. And there's a special style called typewriter that's good for making text look like computer commands or file names. The command is slash T-E-X-T-T-T -T -T, and that's how that looks. Finally, this is not a text formatting issue as such, but using quotation marks in LaTeX can be a little tricky. For using single quotes, we can't just use the single quote key or apostrophe key that's next to the return both times or else it looks like this. Instead, to open a single quotation, I use the quote mark that's in the top left of the keyboard. To close the quote, use the apostrophe. Likewise, to use double quotation marks, I need to open them by using the quote key in the top left of the keyboard twice, and then close them by using the usual double quote key. So that's your quick tour through text formatting. Thanks for watching. Hello there and welcome to video 7 in the Introduction to LaTeX series. This video is about the very important subject of environments in LaTeX. In this video we're going to learn about environments in general and how their syntax works, and then we're going to see some environments that change the formatting of text, such as centering, flush left and flush right, and environments that change the size of text. So an environment is a block of a LaTeX document that's being instructed to behave in some kind of way that is fundamentally different from the rest of the document. For example, if I had a block of text that I wanted centered, I would need to have an environment for that. It will turn out that if we want to have a column of equations that are all aligned by their equal sign, we'll need an environment for that. And so environments show up very often in LaTeX, and they all have the same basic syntax. We have to have a way of telling LaTeX when the environment is beginning and when it is ending. And we do that by typing slash begin, and then in curly braces give the name of the environment, and then enter in the stuff that we want in the environment, and then tell it to end by typing slash end, and then curly braces, and then the name of the environment, and then close the curly braces off. And so when you think about that, you've actually become very familiar with one basic kind of environment. 
and that environment is the document environment. We know all LaTeX documents after the preamble is done start with begin document and end with end document. So document is one kind of environment. There are others. Let's take a look at a few and then the next few videos are going to focus in on even more. The center environment places text centered on the page. For example, if I wanted this sentence here to be centered, I would just put slash begin curly brace center close curly brace where I wanted the centering to start, and then end center where I want it to end. Another environment, flush right, is like center, but it puts text all the way over to the right side of the page. Here it is in action. There's a similar environment called flush left. Environments are also how we get text to appear larger and smaller in the output of a LaTeX document. For example, to make this sentence one notch larger than regular text, I use the environment large that has a small l, lowercase l. This environment name, like most other things in LaTeX, is case sensitive. If I use a capital L, I get text that is even larger than lowercase l large is. Likewise, to make text smaller, I use the small environment. So in general, to use an environment in LaTeX, we find out which environment we need and what its name is, and then we put slash begin name of environment where we want it to start, and slash end name of environment where we want it to stop. There are many other environments in LaTeX which you can find out about through a Google search. The next few videos are going to focus on some of the more important of these which are used for things such as producing auto-numbered equations, aligned formulas, bulleted lists, and tables. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to the eighth video in a series on LaTeX, the mathematical typesetting system. In the previous video, we learned about the concept of an environment, which is a way of setting off chunks of a LaTeX document to behave according to some specific rules. The next three videos are going to look at specific environments that do some common and useful things. In this video in particular, we're going to learn about an environment for typesetting displayed equations. So first we're going to recap what we already know about displayed equations using the double dollar sign notation and introduce an alternative way to do this. Then we're going to show how to use both the equation environment and the equation star environment to create displayed equations in a slightly different way. So actually we already know how to create displayed equations in LaTeX and that's using the double dollar sign notation. For example, let's typeset this equation offset using displayed mode, double dollar sign x squared plus y squared equals 1 and then close the double dollar signs and typeset and that creates the equation in a nice displayed mode. Something I didn't mention earlier is that there's another equivalent notation for this and that's using uh, the following notation. Uh, we're going to type slash open square bracket and then we'll type the same equation again x squared plus y squared equals 1 and then slash close the square brackets and then we compile we see that both of these notations do exactly the same thing. They create a displayed mode equation. Some people prefer the square bracket notation over the double dollar sign notation, so we need to be equally proficient with each. Now there's an environment that does this as well, and it's called the equation environment. It's very simple to use. Let's do an example. We're just going to open the environment by typing slash begin curly brace equation and close the curly braces. And then we're just going to type in the equation we want. Let's go with x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals 1. And then we close the environment as usual by typing slash end curly brace equation close curly brace. When we compile, we see we get a nice displayed mode equation just like the previous equations were. So you're probably asking, what's the point of having the equation in environment when you already have the double dollar sign and slash square bracket notation? Well, the main reason is over here on the right edge of the page. Notice that when you use the equation environment, the equation is automatically numbered by LaTeX, and this becomes a very useful feature. 
Uh, so for example, let's suppose this last equation with the fourth powers is one that I'm going to be referring back to several times in my document. I can use LaTeX to give that equation an alias or a, a label and refer back to it using the label. To see how this works, let's go up to here just after the environment is opened and type slash label and then curly braces and then I'm going to choose a name for this. I'm just going to call it fourth power and close the curly braces. And now let's add a sentence uh, to see how this works following the equation. So I'm going to type equation and then I'm going to use a new command called ref slash ref curly braces and then the thing I'm going to plug into the curly braces is the label that I typed above fourth power close curly braces and then I'll finish off the sentence as follows. Notice in the argument of the ref command is the same label that I defined above. When I compile, LaTeX is going to automatically insert the appropriate equation number where the ref command was placed in the sentence. Now why this is good is that since equations are automatically numbered by LaTeX if you use the equation environment, if I happen to add a new equation up above this one, I don't want the equation with the fourth powers to be equation one anymore. That really ought to be equation two. Let's go and do this. I'll go up above the uh, previous equation and type in a new equation. Begin equation x cubed plus y cubed equals one, let's say, and then end the equation. Now, like I said, this equation ought to be equation 1 now, and the one with the fourth powers ought to be equation 2. When I compile, what you see is that since the equations are automatically numbered, LaTeX... Hello, and welcome to the 10th video in this series on LaTeX, the mathematical typesetting system. We're in the midst of looking at several LaTeX environments for doing some common tasks, and in this video, we're going to take a look at lists. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the enumerate, itemize and description environments for making lists and how they differ from each other. So all three of these environments are in text mode, not in math mode. So we won't be needing the equation or align environments here. First, let's talk about the enumerate environment. This is an environment used for making auto numbered lists. For example, let's make a list containing the names of four math classes that undergraduates should take. To start, we'd open the environment by typing slash begin curly brace, enumerate, and close the curly brace. Now for each item I want to add to the list, I begin by typing slash item, followed by a space, and then the thing I'm adding into the list. So let's make calculus the first entry. Now let's add linear algebra. And now add geometry. Close off the environment the usual way by typing slash end curly brace enumerate close curly brace. And once you compile, you see that you have a nicely formatted ordered list. The numbering in the enumerate environment is automatic. Let's say we meant to add discrete math between calculus and linear algebra. Just go back to that place in the list and add a new item. And once the document is compiled again, notice that not only is discrete math added to the list, the other items in the list are automatically renumbered to reflect the addition. If you want to create a sublist, just start a new enumerate environment within the current one. For example, let's suppose I wanted to add calculus 1, calculus 2, and calculus 3 as a sublist underneath the calculus item. Go underneath the calculus item and start a new enumerate environment and then add those three items. 